Hello everyone, this is my Activity 25. I'm Michael Rees, who previously taught computer science at Australia's first private university. I've been retired 18 months, and in that time have started over a dozen MOOCs and completed about six of them, including this one. I'm taking my cue from Brian Alexander, who was forced to use the word MOOC in place of open education when talking to university administrators. About a month ago I gave a talk at my institution on my experiences of those dozen MOOCs or so. This was a traditional seminar and last 50 minutes. The link is here if you're interested. At the end of that talk I exhorted my colleagues to think in terms of four minute lectures because that was the time of the videos on my most successful MOOCs. The Australian, one of the leading Australian newspapers, recently had a top 50 most important people in Australian higher education. This is the top 12 and you'll see surprisingly that Sebastian Thrun, founder of Udacity, appears at number two. I am a big supporter of just-in-time learning and this is how I visualize it when you set out to tackle a problem, a project or a unit of study you first of all refine th what the problem is, discover maybe a new term or concept you're not familiar with, you then go off and construct a new problem or project around that new topic once you've learnt about that, you come back to your learning trajectory and hopefully this time carry on through to complete your unit of learning and on your learning trajectory goes. So this is an iterative pro process and you can go through it to any number of times. I'm interested in Donald Clark's look at who would be MOOC consumers. He identifies seven categories and these are they. I'm I think more interested in the green ones, which I think are going to be most important in the near term for MOOCs. This is the pathway through life as I now see it, with MOOC providers uh, on various levels. You as a learner will build your MOOC portfolio, you'll receive a whole hodgepodge of certificates, badges and other micro-credentials and you'll carry that around with you through life. Part of that MOOC portfolio you'll wish to display publicly on a variety of sources, web, blogs, so social media, etc. and it'll effectively become your resume. This you can then use to get work either for a company or be self-employed and at the same time you'll want to continue <laughs> doing MOOCs for your own life balance, your education, you may volunteer in the community and just your general contribution to life. During the talk I mentioned I came up with the new unit milli degree, simply one thousandth of a degree. I worked out that my institution to get a three-year degree students would need 24 units and about 40 contact hours roughly per unit. That means a single subject is worth 42 milli degrees. I then turn my mind to how much uh, are MOOCs worth. And in my experience of the dozen or so that I've tried, I would put a MOOC in that range of 15 to 35 milli degrees. So you could extrapolate that concept and say, well, 40 to 50 MOOCs would equate to one degree. My colleagues had mixed reaction on that idea. One of the ideas I've seen that may well allow universities to survive in the MOOC world is this idea from Jim Barber, the Vice Chancellor of the University of New England here in Australia. He indicates the idea of a freemium university. Basically all the courses would be free, just like a MOOC, but the business model from a university standpoint would be in the add-on services they would give to the students who took the MOOCs. Things like accredited examinations, moderated discussion groups and tutorial assistance for example. This is one of the better ideas for a business model for universities going forward. Here is the 
dropout rate for MOOCs as uh, put forward by Phil Hill. It's always remarked upon as a very poor example of, of what happens in MOOCs. But I just pose the question, if you, a teaching a university subject, had no prerequisites, made the course free and invited anyone from the world to participate in your course, what dropout rate would you expect? I'd like to thank Martin for this look at open education. I've come out of this course with a much more rounded idea of what it's about. I was a big, big MOOC supporter when I went into the course. I've learned a lot more about OERs that I'd effectively dismissed out of hand, being a little OER supporter. I'd not really considered the ped pedagogy in as much detail as we covered here. I'm grateful for that. And I'm also grateful for you, my fellow students, uh, for contributing to this course. I thoroughly enjoyed it. These are the links to the sources I used or created in making this video.